All right. Um, so we're going to keep moving forward. This is Casey Shiley, the Youth Services Consultant. Um, if we have not had a chance to meet, hi. Um, I moved into this position after Jana retired back at the end of July. Um, and so we are going to got someone with a tech issue. We're going to try to help get them straightened yeah, out. We're just going to, let's see here. Um, and it looks like somebody's having trouble um, with the view audio options button not functional. Um, interesting. Okay, Dolly, how's your your view audio looking? Looks like it's looks like it's functional. Mine's fine. Yeah. Okay. I think Does any, fine. Is anybody else having trouble under the audio tab? It gives you the option to select phone call or computer audio. Is anybody else having any issues with that? Can you get to it? Does it look normal? Uh, okay. So when you call in, you select phone call, um, and let me give you that information. Um, I'll send it to you. I'm actually going to email it. All right. Um, so Kimberly, we're going to keep moving forward and Melissa is going to send you the information for calling in. Um, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so Jana retired at the end of July and I moved into this position back in August and um, we have been busy, busy here getting things ready for the summer reading program. Um, I do want to just send out a, a thank you to everybody as we were moving through this new um, ordering process for materials. Um, Bonnie, I see that you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? All right, um, so before we get started, we do have a couple of announcements here from the Bureau of Library Development. Um, and I'm gonna start with um, probably the one that's that's been with us for about the last week. If you had not yet heard, um, Sandy Newell, who was one of our BLD team me members, passed away very unexpectedly last week. Um, and I know that a lot of you might know who she is, um, she did a lot of work with literacy. Literacy was a big passion of hers. She also worked with new directors a lot, and she mentored many, many people out in the field as well. Um, and so she has definitely left a very, very big hole, um, big shoes to fill, and a lot of passion projects that we we're hoping to, to keep moving forward in her honor. Um, one thing I was asked to share is that we are working on collecting stories um, to share with her family to show them just how much she really meant to not just us, those who got to work with her day in and day out, but really the impact she had across the state. And so if you have any of those stories that you would like to share with us, please do. Um, you've got my email address right there, but you can also keep an eye out because um, I think we'll be putting something out very, very soon. Um, so I hate to start with, with something so not happy, um, but you know, Sandy would have wanted us to keep moving forward. She was so passionate about everything we did, and we're going to take that passion and keep moving forward with it. Um, some of the other news we have, and I have her permission to share this, um, Melissa, who I know many of you have seen and heard for many years, has actually just accepted a new position. This will be one of her last of two webinars. Um, she's leaving us next week. The good news, though, is that she will actually be taking Karen Day's position with CSLP. So we all get to still see her name. We get to still work with her. Um, and so we are excited to uh, see her move into such a great position. But of course, we're, we're sorry that we're going to end up losing her. Losing and gaining both at yes. the same time. <laughs> so. so the reason we are all here, imagine your story. Um, so I'm excited to, to turn things over to our workshop presenters who worked so hard and bringing so many great ideas to everybody. 
um, these last couple of months all across the state. And so I'm going to turn it over to Sally Mason, who did um, our workshops in the Swithland area, and she picked up one up here in the, in the Panhandle area as well. So I'm going to hand it over to Sally. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sally Mason. I am the Teen Services Librarian at the Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library. And you can see my email and my phone number there if you need to contact me or if have, have any questions. Um, and then there's my Pinterest board down there. Um, and as Casey said, I did two of the, the two workshops in Swiftlin and one in Plan, and we had a great time um, doing them. So I'm excited to share some of the ideas we did. So in the morning, we did teens in the morning and then younger kids and more family programs in the afternoon. So one of the first programs we did for teens was teen zines. Um, and this has been really popular. Um, we've actually started doing this program at my library and the teens really love it. So a teen or a teen zine is a self-published magazine. Um, it can be made individually or collaboratively together and it can tackle any number of topics. It could be fiction, nonfiction, um, cover, all kinds of things. Um, just today, NPR posted one about the coronavirus for kids to read, um, which was really cool. Um, so the finished product eventually is photocopied and then distributed. So you can see a couple examples right there of the ones we did at the workshop. Uh, and I love this program because it's really affordable. It just uses paper and magazines um, that you could buy or get from your friends at the library if you have that option. Um, and then scissors and lots and lots of glue. Um, so we used, we actually did it the collaborative way, which I think is kind of a more fun way to do it. Um, individually could take a little more time if you want to work on it. Um, but collaboratively, each person got a half a sheet of paper on cardstock, and then they just kind of went to it. And we kind of had a theme, but not really. So you can kind of see that it kind of goes with the library theme and the theme of the summer reading. Um, so once they decorated them, um, we scanned them all together <clears throat> and made them into a booklet. And I used this really cool app called Adobe Scan. Um, and it creates a digital scan of each page and it auto crops it just like you see it um, on the screen. So it automatically puts it in a document together and then you can um, share it by emailing it or just printing it out. Um, if you were going to do the individual way, you could make little foldable booklets. Um, but this is a great program for teens. It allows them to be creative, um, share their voice with their community and work together. Um, it also gives them a lot of time to be social while they're doing the program, which I know teens love to do. Um, and even some libraries have started circulating zines. I was at the Jacksonville Public Library recently and they had a whole collection of zines that you could check out. So this would be a really fun program to do. The next program we did for teens was Shrinky Dink Keychains. Um, this program has been such a hit. I've also done this with my teens recently just to test it out. Um, so what we used was shrinky dink plastic, which is a type of plastic that when it's heated up, it shrinks down in size. It's basically recycled plastic number six. So you could use that um, if you had the time to do that. Um, but what I did was I just ordered um, 50 sheets, eight and a half by 11 from Amazon, and it was about $20 um, for the whole pack which goes a long way. Um, I used the library's die cut machine and cut out everybody's initials. Um, I've also cut out other shapes, like you can see the butterfly and some of the flowers and stuff um, to decorate them. They can also just do it freestyle, which I would give them like half a sheet of paper of the plastic and let them kind of do their own thing. Um, to color them, uh, we used Sharpie markers that seemed to work best because it seemed to hold the color the most. Um, a big reminder, if you do the keychains, you want to make your hole punch before you heat it up because once you've heated it up, it gets really hard and really um, impossible to cut your hole through. Um, the heating process, we used a toaster oven. So you can use a toaster oven, a regular oven, um, or a heat gun. And for me, it just seemed to work better to use a toaster oven because it was more mobile um, and safer with some of the kids that were um, doing the program. Um, 
So they're really cool. Um, and then the kids, teens or kids could finish them off with needle nose pliers and keychains. And I believe the keychains, I got 100 of them for about $7 on Amazon. So again, this program was really affordable and easy to do. And they had a lot of fun being social and collaborative while they did it. All right, and then the afternoon, um, we did a whole night training kind of exercise camp. Um, so we designed a coat of arms, which was one of the ideas in the book. And if you go to the link in the book, it takes you to a web page with a bunch of different templates you can use. Um, you can do like the four corners one where you um, draw a picture in each one. Um, the one we did was we cut out just a basic shield, and then we actually cut lines through it and wove the shield. So it looked like a woven shield and it had different colors and stuff. And then we did a little STEM program with, with a marshmallow catapult with just jumbo um, sticks and a spoon. And this one went really well with The Marshmallow Incident by Judy Barrett. It was a really funny book, um, and we had a lot of fun shooting marshmallows across the room at each other. Um, we also did a little labyrinth exercise where we had to get the ping pong ball through the labyrinth. Um, and then we did some jousting with pool noodles um, or javelin thro throwing with pool noodles, which kind of went into our build a night, which was a really fun group exercise we did. And you can see one of my groups right there. So each team got um, two rolls of aluminum foil and some tape, and they just had to get to it. <laughs> Um, they took about 10 minutes, maybe 15, um, to build their night and turn their night into the best night they could be. And they had to add their um, shields and swords and helmets and all their accessories um, with just aluminum foil and tape. And they did a phenomenal job. It was so much fun. I will say it does get hot in there. So if you were going to do this um, program, I would set a time limit and make sure nobody's in the shield for, or the aluminum foil for too long. Um, so that was one of our fun programs we did that was kind of like a family all ages program or you could take all of those um, programs out and do them individually if you wanted to. Perfect. Thank you, Sally. Um, before we move on to Alex, does anybody have any questions for Sally about any of the activities that she spoke about? Um, just a reminder, you um, can raise your hand and we can unmute you or you can type in the chat. All right, and I see that we have a hand up. Shelby, um, I'm not seeing any, any audio for you. Did you have a question or a comment? And Deborah asked, will there be a recording of this webinar? Yes, you will be emailed a copy and then there will also be a copy to go up on our YouTube channel. All right. If we don't have any other questions for Sally, then I am going to turn it over to Alex. Hi, everybody. Um, hi. Good afternoon. My name is Alex Phillips. I'm the Assistant Branch Manager and Youth Services Librarian at the Southeast Library um, in St. John's County. I live in historic St. Augustine, and I love it. Um, I'm also mom to three little boys ages five and under, so life is very full at the moment. Uh, I presented four workshops in the Nephlin area um, throughout January, and I'm going to give you some highlights from those sessions. Two of them are teen programs, and two of them are kid programs, although all four are pretty easily adapted to a wide range of ages. So we're going to start off with um, the first activity, which is green screen magic. And Alex. Um, so, yes, ma'am. Sorry, we've got one more hand up. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, yes, no. I see that your hand is up. I have unmuted you if you'd like to speak. 
Um, but it looks like you also have yourself muted. So did you have a question or a comment? All right, I'm not hearing anything from Yasmin. So Alex, take it away. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, so, oh, so green screen. Uh, we use an app called Green Screen by Do Inc. That's D O space I N K. Um, and I had groups create news clips using one prompt. So I told them, um, You are a fairy tale reporter, complete with a pen name, um, who is on the trail of a hot news story. So they were challenged to create a short script and perform a brief news broadcast reporting the story complete with eyewitnesses. <laughs> we um, had a bunch of inexpensive photo booth style props. Um, I handed out the iPads that had the app loaded onto them and I let them explore. Uh, I did a brief little hands-on walkthrough of the app, although it's very simple. Um, this app specifically was $2.99, but there are free um, alternatives that you could use. I just loved how user-friendly this one was. Um, the photo booth props that I got were around $10. Um, and I also purchased a pop-up green screen backdrop for $40 that was two-sided. But we've done the same program using just a green sheet or even um, if you have space to paint a wall green or anything like that, those work too. Um, the app was extremely simple and allowed them to insert whatever background they desired, either from the in-app image library or from Google. If we had more time, I would have also had them explore the animation options that were really fun within the app. I feel like you could do a lot with teens um, with this app and even turn it into a series if you wanted to over the summer um, and then maybe do like um, a movie viewing at the end of the summer with everybody's work. Oh, it would be so much fun. So after we recorded our um, news broadcast, we all got together to sit um, and watch them and I laughed so hard that my cheeks hurt afterwards. It was great. Everybody did a great job. Um, the second program I wanted to highlight was an interactive movie viewing. Um, has anybody done an interactive movie before? It is awesome. Um, it does take a little bit more work than a basic movie showing, but it's so fun. For our demonstration, I grabbed a script and an outline, both already completed um, from Teen Services Underground, which as an aside is a really, really good resource for all things like teens and libraries as far as like programming um, and literacy. And it's just really good if you haven't checked that out yet. Um, and then I prepped the materials. So we watched a scene from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in which Harry begins receiving letters from Hogwarts. So if you can remember that movie and remember that scene, um, during the scene, the script says to throw a paper airplane every time a Hogwarts letter goes unopened. And if you can remember that scene, after a couple letters here and there, letters start flying everywhere inside the Dursley's house. So as a result, we had paper airplanes all over the room. I just had them throwing them, pick it up, throw them over and over and over again. It was, it was really fun. There was a lot of laughter. Um, this program's very easily adaptable to loads of different fantasy and superhero themes for the summer, um, many of which are still extremely popular with teens and kids right now. Um, all you have to do really is Google movie title plus interactive movie script, and generally you'll be able to find a workable script and outline already done for you. So that's at least like 50% of the work there. So all you have to do is print it out, prepare some paper bags with the required items, which is a great task for volunteers. Uh, and hand them out as people enter the room. Um, it's a wonderful way to bring new life to a movie showing and step it up. Um, so and, moving on. Oh, and, go ahead. And Erin uh, typed in the chat that said, yes, we did hairspray a few summers ago. Oh, so fun. I love it. It really, it reminded me um, of, oh gosh, what's the, um, oh, there's a cult classic movie and I can't, uh, Rocky Horror. <laughs> <laughs> like a kid version, um, interactive movie. Anyway, um, so we're going to switch over to kids now. Uh, and one activity we did was fairy crafts. Um, we did a pixie dust sensory bottle. Um, so after a couple of months of collecting old um, plastic bottles and pro tip, the mini plastic soda bottles are a lot sturdier than just the water bottles, so that worked out really well for us. Um, 
I had everybody get a water bottle or get a, sorry, a soda bottle, um, one mini tube of glitter glue, a small tub of large loose glitter. This is like mini like um, nail art glitter that we used. Um, and then a little baggie of fine glitter. We poured warm water into the bottles and then emptied all of the glitters into them and shook them up like crazy until the glitter glue broke down and everything kind of mixed together. The results were mesmerizing. Um, we got to chat a little bit about density since some of the glitter tried to float and some sunk to the bottom. So got to discuss that a little bit. Um, and we watched the pixie dust swirl around before settling. Um, I've seen some parents use these as calm down bottles, which makes sense because I definitely felt calmer watching the glitter swirl while I took some nice deep breaths. Um, and our other one was the Toadstool Fairy House. Um, you can go in a bunch of different directions doing a fairy house, but I chose one that was very, very simple, very cheap, um, and easily adaptable for varying ages and abilities. So all we had was a red plastic bowl, a white paper cup, um, some white paper polka dots, glue sticks, and gel pens. So kids can get as detailed as they would like and everyone ends up with an adorable little fairy house with the paper cup as the base and the plastic bowl upside down on top. Et voila, toadstool fairy house. All the materials are available at the dollar store, um, but I purchased them in bulk on Amazon. It just worked better cost-wise for me. Um, so those were really fun. You could get more involved. We've done um, fairy crafting, fairy gardening. Um, we've done things out of clay um, or little terracotta pots with tiny little fairy houses and fairies in them. Um, but this was just a very easy, um, oh, I see a question, a website for the interactive. The website that I got was Teen Services Underground. That's where I got mine. Um, and Teen Services Underground is wonderful for all sorts of programs. So if you dig deep into it, um, you can find some good stuff. Um, so I'm going to move on now to our last activity. Oh, thank you, Linda. Um, using tech to get active. So if your library doesn't already offer um, any kind of fitness or movement classes, I highly recommend it. Um, you don't have to be scared of offering them. One easy way to get started is to use videos that are already made. Um, we've tinkered around a little bit with Go Noodle, and I know they use that in my son's classroom, but I highlighted another resource for my workshops. Um, so I'm going to take you there to visit it today. And so let's see, is everybody able to see my screen now? Okay, so this is cosmickids.com. There's also a YouTube channel and an app as well. Um, and I've used these videos for a summer's worth of yoga programs when I was hugely pregnant and unable to get into downward dog or any yoga pose, really. Um, and the kids loved doing them all together. So for the workshops, we demoed a meditation video. I wasn't going to have everybody up and doing <laughs> yoga. Um, so if we go to watch the episodes, you can sort by length, energy, category, I'm just gonna go to energy real quick and click on calm. Um, Peace out your little star is one that we did at one of the workshops and it's a guided meditation specifically for kids led by this person right here, Jamie. She does all the yoga stuff too. Um, and it was amazing. So um, it was a, a good chance for everyone to regroup and kind of like be calm. Um, I wanted to mention that the American Academy of Pediatrics reports that more than half of children in the U.S. are not getting the recommended amount of weekly physical activity. And just like with reading, um, encouraging kids and teens to be active from a young age sets good habits early on and helps them to develop the skills that they need to stay active throughout their lives. So by encouraging um, activities like this, like the meditation or yoga, um, can really help lead to increased focus self-control, coping strategies, emotional regulation, and better relationships. Um, so highly recommend. Uh, if you're interested in trying to find a resource to become um, a licensed yoga teacher, if you need to do that for your library or your organization, she also has the, op the option of um, taking a free mini training or becoming certified through her website as well. It's the most cost-effective one that I've found anyway, but 
even if you're just using the free videos for yoga and meditation, it's a, a great resource. I've been using it for several years now. Um, so, but wait, what about liability? Um, <laughs> my library system worked with our county attorneys to create liability waivers that we use in all of our food and exercise programs. Um, and I've included those and a lot of other stuff on a collaborative Google Doc, which is right here. So I created a shortened URL um, that is bit.ly slash flip2020. So bit.ly slash F-L-Y-P capitalized 2020. And it will take you to this document. So it is, um, thank you for typing it in there too, in the chat. Um, so it has all of the information from the four workshops and Aaron even added the TBLC region resources at the end. So if we scroll through, you will find our book list and then also um, all of the program outlines um, that I did at all of the workshops. So if you go all the way through and you can see on the left hand side, the little table of contents, um, you have a variety of program outlines that are already thought out, ready to go, brainstormed with a group of library staff. Um, so hopefully that takes a little bit of the work out of your prepping and planning um, for this summer. I also wanted to take the opportunity to mention the Flip Exchange Facebook group um, that uh, the Florida Library Youth Services staff put together, or for the, excuse me, the Bureau of Library Development put together for us. Um, if you're on Facebook, I recommend checking it out on here, sharing ideas. Um, I posted photos from, um, from my workshops on there a little bit ago. Um, so check it out if you have not already. And um, I, did that not, is I, I did not <laughs> pay her to plug that, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that was all me. I, I really, really liked it. And I thought it was a good idea to have a, a Facebook group for us to share ideas. Thank you for doing that, Casey. <laughs> Um, and that is it for me. Please feel free to email me if you have um, any questions at all. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. Any quick questions for Alex before we move on Oops. to Aaron and Robin? And just a reminder that you will be receiving an email with all of these resources in it um, after the webinar. So it, don't worry if you're trying to, to scramble to write something down and you don't quite get it all, you'll have another chance to get it. Joseph said, thanks, Alex. The interactive movie idea sounds really great. All right, then I'm gonna turn it over to Aaron and Robin. Hi, everybody. So I am Erin Arnold. I, we are in the Marion County Public Library System in Ocala, Florida. And I'm with I'm Robin Wayne. Um, I'm at the headquarters location in Ocala in uh, information services. I work with teens and adults. And I'm a branch supervisor of Marion Oaks Public Library and uh, 12 years as a children's librarian before that. And we had an amazing time going around to the TBLC region. Um, we did four workshops around there. And I just want to comment that they gave us the best hospitality ever where we oh, went. Yeah. We had a total blast. So um, if you are in that region, you guys you guys did a great job and were great hosts for us uh, this slip season. All right, so um, before we talk about some of the highlights of our workshops, I wanted to mention that um, there's this great resource that I learned about from Jana Fine, um, I believe last year. Um, the Search Institute came out, I think about 30 years ago with this um, developmental framework called the 40 Assets. And what they did was they identified 40 supports and strengths that young people need to succeed. And half of the assets focused on the kinds of relationships and opportunities that uh, kids and teens need from their communities, from their families, from the schools. Um, and then the other assets focus on their social and emotional strengths, the values, the commitments that they get um, it's in order to make them positive um, contributors to our society. So if you search 
for the Search Institute and 40 assets in your favorite search engine of choice. You'll come up with all their lists. They have four free downloads that you can get for all of the, uh, for the four different age ranges, all the way from early literacy to adolescence. And then I believe they partnered with ALA a couple years ago to come out with a library specific one. But I, I think that we have to remember why we do some of the programming we do and why we collect, um, we create the collections that we do. Um, so yes, libraries are fun and we want the kids and the teens to have fun um, at the library, but it's also important to um, focus on um, how we can, how our programs and how our collections help these kids become great adults. So definitely check out that. It's been kind of an eye opener for me for sure. All right, so this is a fun little craft that we did with um, for teens, but I think it could go through um, all ages, just depending on how um, involved you want to get with it. Um, so these little mermaid necklaces, you can get a pack of 100 of these pre-drilled seashells on Amazon for about 15 bucks. And then just some little glass gems and beads and glitter glue or the metallic glue. And you make a fun little mermaid necklace. Um, but words the wise, definitely shop around for the glitter glue because when I did my shopping, some stores had it for like eight bucks a bottle and some stores had it for like three bucks a bottle. So definitely pay attention. Maybe do some price shopping before you do that. Other than that, you can pretty much recycle some of the materials you may have on hand. Thanks, Linda. Linda is our is on it with the uh, links in the chat today. <laughs> um, you can uh, definitely use what you've got to make the necklaces. Um, and I did want to share this little mermaid skeleton uh, guy or gal I got. Those were sort of, I think, the most popular free prize that we gave out for participation at our workshop. I got that from Oriental Trading, but people really dug the um, mermaid skeleton. Um, and then there's a link right there to get to the uh, blog with the mermaid necklaces. So definitely check that out. Okay, well, um, we we had a lot of fun with Go Noodle. Um, it's Go Noodle was invented as a uh, a way for teachers to get their kids active in between lessons. But it's uh, it's really fun, and they have a lot of um, a lot of different activities that you could fit into almost any program that you do. Um, this one, the one we did was called Milkshake, uh, which I found when I was doing a science program about um, and where we made milkshake in a bag. And then we did this ahead of time and it's just a blast. Um, you can, they, they have a website, you can go, you can sign in or you can just search for it and um, find find them on YouTube, but they're hilarious. Yeah, I definitely have the milkshakes on in my head for days. Afterwards, <laughs> yeah, they'll be rare. <laughs> but there's also, what do we do? Like the kitty, was kitty high five was a good kitty one? High, yeah, nice. Cat party. Cat party. Oh, cat oh party was hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, then, and some of, some of the attendees had their own favorites that we that we did too. So we we took we took requests and we uh, we had a lot of fun with them. Yeah, a good after lunch thing. Slow motion machine is a good one too. We like that. Yeah, cuckoo kangaroo. Um, but there's also there's all these fun dance ones, but there are so, there are also a lot of ones where you can do the calm down, you can do right, the, right. They they do the kind of kids it. meditation, and there's all kinds of variety on there. So definitely check those. So I always try to fit some science into my program, science or math. Um, and I was thinking rain, rain, rainbows and unicorns. We did the um, density rainbow. Um, I tried the, Steve Spangler has a uh, sugar density column. This is just the, his regular density column. But um, the sugar one, I would recommend you try it ahead of time because it's not easy. This uh, other density rainbow has honey, uh, corn syrup, Dawn dish soap, uh, water, lamb oil, um, olive oil. Oh, no? No. The vegetable oil, yeah. Vegetable oil and uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, some of them are dyed different colors, make pretty. And uh, it's foolproof. So the sugar one is not foolproof. <laughs> <laughs> this one, if you wanted to, you could you could mess up on purpose, and then yeah. it sorts itself out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, too. I put I, I, on one of the workshops. I put them out of order, and they just switched themselves up. So that was fun. And then we did a. Uh, so I was thinking about Humpty Dumpty, and there are so many egg experiments you could do. But this is the one where you put the 
You put a glass of water, a tie plate, a paper towel tube, because we know where toilet paper tubes have been, and then an egg on top of that, and you, um, you hit the pie plate and the egg drops in the water. Hopefully, <laughs> one of them it didn't, but then I did it again and I got all kinds of applause. <laughs> so, so that was really fun as me being really um, dramatic. dramatic. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. And um, oh, yeah. And then that backdrop you see in the back, um, that's just a plastic photo backdrop. You cut it apart yourself. And I got that for six dollars or six dollars and something on Amazon, and it looks so realistic. Um, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, can everybody hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Y'all are good. Great. Uh, okay, well, I am uh, Darlene Encomio. I have uh, been doing summer reading for about 10 years now. I have been a library specialist, a children's specialist, a teen librarian, and now I am currently the literacy education and outreach manager for the Martin County Library System, where I have been planning the summer reading program system-wide for the past five years. Okay, and my name is Camila Rodriguez. Um, this will be my third year summer reading experience this year coming up, um, and I am the library team specialist here in Martin County. I serve six branches, and I am the only team specialist in our system. And here's just a quick, uh, uh, some photos and a shout out to the Safflin uh, region where we did our flip workshop. Um, we did them in Martin County, Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade counties, where everyone was wonderful. We had a really good time, and we um, really just want to say thank you to everybody for being so collaborative and for giving us ideas. Yeah, it was definitely an adventure. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, STEAM programming in your summer reading program. Uh, Perler beads, pre-made STEAM kits or just steam ideas in general. Uh, and Legos are all really simple and inexpensive, inexpensive ways to provide programming this summer. Each one can incorporate popular themes this summer, such as knights, unicorns, dragons, or even mermaids. Uh, let's see how we can see some of these flip ideas rolled into this type of programming. So here we have knights. We've talked a little bit about knights already, um, but the theme of knights is just a great way to roll in your steam programming. Uh, by having a knight training or a fairy tale ball, you can have kids create costumes. Um, you can see the program manual for these examples. Um, a big part of a knight training or a fairy tale ball um, could incorporate engineering or building castles and designing them using cardboard or simply purchasing DIY kits um, on Amazon for $20 or less. Uh, a castle building Lego contest is also a very simple and cheap way to provide STEAM programming, especially if you've already got um, like a Lego club or if you've got Duplos already on hand. Uh, you could also purchase an inexpensive medieval scene setter, um, kind of as a photo booth backdrop and if you have an Instax camera um, or an iPad that you're able to use, um, you could have the kids use their technology skills and um, take photos using that. We actually had the medieval scene setter, I think, at most of our flip workshops. And it was really inexpensive and just a great way to have um, kids use the Instax or, the, um, or an iPad to be able to take pictures. For sure. And so unicorns, I feel like this year was like the year of unicorns. Everywhere we went, we saw activities or books or anything on unicorns. Uh, but STEAM events are some of the most popular events that we have in our library system. You can create any theme into a STEAM event. And for instance, the 2020 CSLP manual has many STEAM activities. Uh, most of these ideas can also be found on YouTube and Pinterest. There were so many unicorn um, ideas for crafting on YouTube and Pinterest this year. Um, we also found books like Paint by Sticker, which um, lent itself very well to 
incorporating STEAM or uh, math skills. Um, anything that's patterns or sequencing is a great way to kind of sneak in math. Um, you could create unicorn slime for science, um, and that's easily done with, you could use um, Elmer's glitter glue, um, as well as a little bit of baking soda and some saline solution. Um, you could also um, create unicorn headbands for an artistic approach. And in addition, um, you could also use perler beads. Um, and you could use perler beads for unicorns, for the knights, for the mermaids. Um, you can easily find perler bead kits on Amazon um, or Joann's or Michael's or Target um, because perler beads are actually a great way to introduce the beginning step to coding. Um, I don't think many of us really knew that, but um, we had a we have a great STEAM performer here in the Martin County Library System who gave us that tip, and um, I just thought that that was really fun because perler beads are a great way to not only um, get the kids introduced introduced to coding, um, but they could make those as gifts throughout the summer, especially with Father's Day um, during the middle of summer. And book clubs. So the um, it there's a great way to incorporate successful literacy programs by using book clubs. Um, CSLP recommends an alternative Cinderella book club if you're interested. Um, here at the Martin County Library System, we do a Sunshine State Junior Book Club where we give the kids the brand new book um, that's for the next school year. And um, we allow the kids to actually take it home at the end of the book club. And it's been very successful. Um, so we've been repeating it for the past couple of years by demand. Um, and another type of book club that also fits in well with this summer is a Mythology Quest book club. And what you could do easily for a Mythology Quest book club is you could introduce, um, you could introduce Percy Jackson. And there are some really cool things that you could do with Greek mythology and Percy Jackson this year. Um, you could talk about Greek versus Roman or Norse mythology in your book club. You could have the kids um, design their, what they would be as a god or a goddess. Um, you could introduce them to the Greek alphabet and have them write it um, and write codes using it. Uh, you could host a Greek party. And for more activities, um, there is a wonderful resource out there, which is the Rick Riordan um, website, which is listed here on this slide. Um, you wouldn't even really have to prep much with your book club. You would just really need the books themselves. Um, and then you could actually just go to the Rick Riordan website and get a ton of different activities and resource guides to host your book club. And now we're gonna move on over to Camila for teen programming. All right, everyone. Hi, this is Camila. So uh, one program that I really like to do during the summer that we do here every year at the Martin County Library System during the summer is a uh, con. So um, when I say con, I mean like kind of like Comic Con, Super Con, something like that. And what I really like about this type of event is that it's really flexible and you can really make it work for your location, your library. So you can make it really big if you have a bigger budget um, and treat it kind of like a summer reading finale party for teens, which is what we do here in Martin County. Um, what we do is we have different activity stations uh, for the kids to participate in. And so what we, uh, we've done button making in the past, video game tournaments, tabletop games cosplay contests, fandom crafts, we've watched movies. Our collection manager, uh, she's given us some of our, her advanced reader's copies that she gets sent uh, for YA books and we've given those away. Um, we have photo booths, STEM activities, et cetera. Uh, we've had outside cosplay groups come and teach, uh, not teach, but host a cosplay contest and that was really awesome. So if you are able to do that and reach out to a local cosplay group, I definitely recommend that. Um, but yeah, so the way that we do it here in Martin County is we make a committee of people, a planning committee for our con. Uh, our event is called FanFest. And we send out a department-wide email and we ask everyone, even if they don't work in the services, if they would like to participate, if they have an interest in cons or in cosplay. And 
every year we get a, a lot of really awesome people who maybe haven't we've never really worked with before like because they're not used services and we get them to participate and it's just a really great way to like find out like what interest your library staff has and to like incorporate them and in, in, um, invite them to participate in summer reading so uh, it's definitely a really great opportunity to do that and also if you have a teen advisory board uh, this would be a really cool thing for them to plan um, so if you're looking for something to like give a community service hours a con would be a really fun thing for them to plan for themselves and for their like friends and for other teens in the community um, and you can treat your tab meetings as like planning time and you can give them community service hours for that so that that's pretty cool um, but if you don't have any of that and you just want to make a small event in your teen area, you can also make it really small and just do some really like affordable crafts and that's an option for you too as well. All right, so Darlene mentioned Percy Jackson earlier and yes, Percy Jackson is technically for kids, but I find that a lot of the teens still really like it. Um, so if you're going to be hosting a Greek mythology book club, I definitely like recommend doing this activity. One of our former children's specialists, she ran a, a Greek mythology book club and they read Percy Jackson and she did this activity and it went really well. And I've hosted uh, flower pot painting programs and they've also been really successful. Um, but for this, you're gonna need some clay flower pots. Uh, you can buy those at Lowe's. You probably find them on Amazon or Walmart um, and they're not that expensive. You're gonna need some black Sharpie markers, some Greek mythology inspired patterns. So what I uh, would recommend is to go on Pinterest and just type in like Greek style pottery patterns or Greek mythology inspired patterns and a lot of uh, different patterns will pop up and you can use those and have the kids trace them. Um, and then this last part is optional, but I definitely recommend it if you can. Um, so when I did my uh, flower uh, pot painting program uh, with some of the teen girls that meet in a group, um, here in Martin County, I uh, provided them with soil and seeds to take home, and they were really, really excited about that um, because they were gonna, get, they got to take it home and like grow something themselves, and they kind of just um, got to make something and grow something and like give them ownership, a sense of ownership. Um, so it's not necessary to, to do this, but if you can, I definitely recommend it, um, and it's not that expensive either. And there is a question in the chat. Um, okay. What kind of seeds do you provide? I did tomato seeds. Um, they're like these smaller tomatoes. I, I forget the exact name, but they were smaller tomatoes. Um, but you could also do like, if you want to do, yeah, like parsley or even like a like some, like a small flower. Yeah, cilantro. So anything that's not going to be too big, because you don't obviously you don't want to give them like huge pots. Okay, so um, Rick Briard, Rick Riordan is really, really famous, and obviously, like we've all heard of Percy Jackson and Max Chase and all the wonderful books that he's written. But one of the really cool things that he's done is create an imprint where he hires um, writers from different cultures from around the world to write about their own mythologies. And so, um, like here on the screen, um, I put the Storm Runner and Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. And uh, the Storm Runner is based on Mayan mythology, and Tristan Strong is based on West African mythology and African American folk tales. So this is a really awesome opportunity to introduce um, the your teens and your kids to different mythologies besides Roman and Norse and Greek, uh, because those are really popular and we seem to always talk about those, but there's also tons of other really cool cultures and mythologies that they, you know, that have really awesome stories. And so this is a really fun opportunity to do that. And actually, if you go on, uh, just like Darlene mentioned with uh, Rick Riordan's website, if you go on the website of a lot of these different authors, um, they have activity ideas on there. So uh, for the Storm Runner, uh, it's based on Mayan mythology. And one of the things that um, is included in the story is they have like a volcano, like a dormant volcano. Um, and so one of the activity ideas that the author put on her website as part of her resources is to create a volcano, um, which would be really fun and something that you can do with teens or kids and you can also incorporate science into that. Um, so it's definitely, 
uh, a great opportunity to introduce your kids to different kinds of stories. Wonderful. Yeah, so thank, thank you so much. Um, so we've got a, a slide here that has all of our presenters um, contact information if you want to reach out to them. Um, but I definitely want to open up the floor uh, for any questions that any of you have for any of our presenters and any of the activities that they um, have. So we're going to keep an eye out. Um, again, everybody's muted. So um, if you want to speak through uh, your microphone, just raise your hand up and we can unmute you or you can post a question in the chat. And while we're waiting for those to come through, um, we are working on getting the Summer Reading Program Statistics webinar scheduled, um, hopefully at some point at the end of April, beginning of May, we hope to have all that so that way you all know, for those whose libraries get the allotments, what, what statistics we need. Kelly said, I'd like to write down the ingredients for the Pixie Dust Sensory Bottles, please. Kelly, we will send everything out to you in an email, um, and that way you'll have everything that you need. You're welcome. And Alex said that activity is also in the Google Doc. So again, we'll share that link out. Linda Goff asked, is everyone using the CSLP posters even though there are Native American images? So for those who may have missed out on what happened, um, CSLP ended up recalling a good bit of the artwork because they had included Native American imagery alongside fairy tale creatures. And after consulting with a national tribal group, they were told that that was quite harmful. Um, so if you placed your materials order after that recall, you probably had to make some changes. They've also opened up a lot of their usage rights so that if you have the ability, you can actually go in and edit those images to take those out if you would like. Or of course, CSLP is happy to exchange anything. And then Deborah said, I would like to have more information on the Fairy Academy that was presented by, by Darlene. Hi, Deborah. Uh, this is Darlene. Uh, please do reach out to me by email. Um, the Fairy Academy was actually created by one of our um, children's librarians here in the Martin County Library System, so I can actually get you two um, connected so that um, you can ask um, you can ask her directly all of the questions that you might have about that very famous Fairy Academy. Well, thank you, Darlene. And Alex did say the link to those updated images is on Flip Exchange, right? Yes, somebody, I think it was the state of Michigan, I think their person took a lot of time to go ahead and edit out some of that Native American imagery and they made those updated posters available. Um, so if you're on Facebook or your library is on Facebook, you can join that Flip Exchange group, and that's an easy way to um, to get a hold of that link. And then we'll also make sure that we send that out. So we have about five more minutes before we um, we close up shop. Any other questions for our presenters? I'm getting lots of great ideas and thanks in the chat. Here's here's the question. Joseph, um, uh, for Camila and Darlene, what's the sort of turnout for the cons? What ages tend to participate? 
So uh, this is Camila speaking. So um, last year, uh, we, hoped it, we hosted at different branches. We tried to every year. Um, if, when we hosted at our biggest branch, we usually get around like 80 people show up. And although it's marketed to teens, um, we do have like entire families that show up and we're not gonna like turn them away. Um, just like a regular Comic Con. Yeah, just like a regular con. Um, last year we hosted it at one of our branches that's a little bit more rural in location. So like people like don't necessarily can't necessarily drive out but we had like a lot of the local kids come and we had 50 teens come which was really like good good for a rural branch for a rural branch so um yeah it's pretty i would say like 50 to 80. we usually anticipate around 75. um yeah. this year we're going to host it at a um at one of our uh locations which is on a college campus and right next to a high school so we anticipate that we're going to have much more than in the past yeah, thank you for the question. Hey, any other questions? All right, I'm not seeing any hands up. Um, Deborah said, thank you all for the great ideas. We had some pretty phenomenal presenters this year. So I certainly appreciate all of them because they, they were able to reach out across the state. All right, well then we will go ahead and wrap up for the day. Of course, if you have any questions that come up, um, you know, after the webinar or as you're going back through things, um, you've got their contact information, you have my contact information, and I can't wait to see pictures of and hear stories of all the great things that you all are going to do this summer. So y'all have a great afternoon and thanks for joining us.